Welcome to our channel. I'm Juan and these are my two Gucci Conyers, pineapple and pumpkin. Let's talk about wing clipping and why you should ultimately leave your birds lighted. So wing clipping is one of the most controversial topics in the bird community and if you're unfamiliar with wing clipping, it's when you trim the ends or the tips of your bird's flight feathers to keep them from flying altogether or to just limit their flight abilities. So you might be wondering why someone- Ow! What are you doing? Don't you want to be next to Pee? Well, now my arm's in an awkward position. Okay, so you might be wondering why someone would want to take flight away from their kids. Kids, yes, they are kids. From their bird. And some of the common reasons include people want to keep their birds safe at home so they don't get into anything that could potentially hurt them. So this could include things like flying into ceiling fans, maybe flying into walls, windows, mirrors, and even falling into open containers of liquid, whether it is a pot of soup that you're cooking on the stove or a pan that you're soaking in the sink. And they could even fall into a toilet if you leave the lid up. Another reason is that people don't want their birds to escape and fly away. Also, people don't want their birds to poop everywhere, so they clip their wings to keep them in one spot so it's easier to clean up the poop. And then the last most common reason that people tend to clip birds' wings is that they want to either tame them or keep them tamed. All of these reasons have one thing in common, and that is that wings are clipped out of convenience for humans. People do resort to wing clipping because it is a fast and convenient solution to get rid of these inconveniences. If you're someone who clips your bird's wings or for those that do clip their bird's wings they're probably not doing it out of malice and you're probably or they're probably thinking that they're protecting their birds and that they're not harming their birds because it's not directly hurting them when you're actually clipping their feathers what people don't realize is that when they're clipping their bird's wings it's actually going to cause detrimental effects to your birds mental and physical health and depending on how long they were clipped could potentially hurt them for the rest of their lives and you could also be making things worse for you. This is especially for those that are new to parrot ownership. They might be thinking that if you clip your bird's wings they won't be able to fly. So of course it depends on the type of clip that a bird gets. Certain clips could take away flight altogether and then there's other clips that could still allow for some flight. Birds just wouldn't be able to get as far or get as much lift and because of this some people think that it would be totally okay to take their birds outside with them and that if they just leave them on their shoulder they won't fly away but that is not the case all it takes is just one really strong gust of wind or if your birds get startled they could jump off and then that strong gust of wind could carry them off whether it be right up into the trees where you could still probably hear them but can't see them and then the problem is that they won't be able to come to you because they can't fly or even worse they could just be picked up by the wind and carried out of sight so they would be gone forever. So if you do have clipped birds, you should never take them outside without them either being on a harness or in a carrier so that they're safe. People who clip their birds' wings might be thinking that they're keeping them safe at home, but in reality, it's actually making it more dangerous for them. Birds have that innate behavior to want to fly, and one of their main defense mechanisms is to fly away if they sense danger or if they see something as a threat. So if a clipped bird were to get startled and they jump out of fear because they can't fly so they could actually hurt themselves by getting into things that they were supposed to avoid to begin with like if you took your bird with you to the kitchen to cook and they're clipped if they get startled they could easily just jump into the frying pan or onto the hot stove and that could kill them it's especially dangerous if there are other pets in the house like cats or dogs that could harm your birds most of the time your dog or your cat if they're not fond of your bird if your bird were to fall on the ground your cat or dog could probably get to it faster than you can. I hear a lot of people say that such birds could glide to safety because if you've ever seen wild birds glide in the air, um, they have their wings spread out open like this and they let the wind carry them through the air. For clipped birds, that's not the case. But what usually ends up happening is that they're going to flap like crazy in an attempt to fly and what could happen is that they either flap too much or not flap enough and they could drop to the ground like a rock. So if they land incorrectly, they could really hurt themselves. 
themselves, whether it is by cracking their beaks, cracking open their chest, and even hurting blood feathers. So this is something that actually happened to my boyfriend's mom's bird a couple years ago. So she got a young Quaker parrot from the pet store. His name is Apple. He did come clipped and I didn't see what happened, but when she described it to me, it was that he tried to fly off of his cage and he either flapped too much or not enough to the point where he started falling backwards and he fell straight down and onto his tail feathers. I could imagine hurt a lot because he also had blood feathers that were coming in. So what happened was he hurt his blood feathers and he was bleeding like crazy. So I had to help her quickly clot the blood feather and once it stopped bleeding, I know you're supposed to pull the blood feathers out, but a few minutes later after I clotted it, Apple actually pulled it out on his own. So yeah, if you decide to get your birds clipped or if you already have clipped birds, there's a possibility that that could happen to them as well. As I mentioned before, people also resort to wing clipping because they don't want to deal with the poop. Oh, hello. Hi. <laughs> oh. Can't you go follow Penny? Go. go play with the box. Shoo shoo. Okay, they're getting distracted by a cardboard box. So what I was saying was that some people want to clip their bird's feathers so that they don't poop everywhere. And a lot of people don't realize, or especially like new bird owners, birds can actually be potty trained just like dogs can. If you want to potty train your bird, it is going to take some time and dedication, not only to teach them, but to teach yourself to read their body language and know when they're going to poop. So you'll be prepared to teach them where to go and which area you want them to go. The other thing is that that people tend to clip their bird's wings to either tame them or keep them tamed. Now, I kind of agree with this to some extent. If you get a bird from the pet store or from a breeder, they usually come clipped, and that is because clipped birds tend to be easier to tame and to form that bond with. Clipped birds are more reliant and more dependent on you because if they've ever tried to fly before and they realize that they can't fly, they're going to want to stick around on you because you're going to be the one that's going to protect them and to move them from place to place. Also, because they're more dependent on you, they might trip a lot more often than usual and they're going to be calling out for you if they can't see you. So it's their way of communicating with you like, Hey, where did you go? I need you. Don't leave me. What a lot of people believe is that if you keep them clipped, they're going to be tamed or they're going to be submissive. Once you form that bond with your bird, it's kind of hard to get rid of that. <laughs> <laughs> still going to have that relationship with them. It's just they're going to be a little bit more independent. Part of your role in that relationship is to understand their wants and needs. So if biting is something that concerns you and that's the reason why you want to clip your bird's wings then you should probably rethink that because birds bite for a lot of reasons and they could possibly just be biting you because they want your attention and you're not giving it to them. So you have to figure out why they're biting you to begin with. You can still form a bond with a flighted bird. Sure it might take a little longer than if you were to form a bond with a clipped bird and sometimes it might not take as long. It all depends on the bird's individual personality. In the end, just know that you could possibly be making your relationship all that much stronger if you decide to leave them flighted and bond with them on their terms. So I've read that if a bird experiences flight and you take that away from them, there's also the possibility of you destroying that trust between you and the bird because they could associate the wing clipping with what you did and then you could kind of ruin your relationship from there. So we've talked about how you could be making things worse for yourself. Now let's talk about the physical and mental effects that wing clipping could have on your bird. I think it's really important to have a basic understanding of bird's anatomy. So here's a really quick anatomy sesh for you. So you might have heard that birds have hollow bones and it's not hollow like a straw or a hose is. Birds have strong and dense bones that actually have tiny spaces or tiny pockets that allow for air to come in through their air sacs. There's about seven to nine air sacs located in the bird's body and it takes up most of the space in their bodies as well. Their air sacs are actually connected to the tiny pockets in their bones. Not only do the air sacs bring in air to their bones, it also of course brings in oxygen to their lungs. The amazing thing about birds respiratory systems is that they actually have the most efficient respiratory system in the entire animal kingdom and that is because when they're flying at such high altitudes where there's less oxygen, they need to be able to intake as much oxygen as they can in order to maintain flight. As they exhale, they're still bringing oxygen into their lungs, which is pretty cool. Because they're always bringing oxygen into their body, it's also a reason why certain 
household items are not dangerous to us but are dangerous to them so we could talk about this in another video birds hearts actually pump a lot faster than ours and that is to help them get that oxygenated blood throughout other parts of their body birds have relatively large eyes that help them see way better than we do and it also helps them maneuver through the air so they don't crash into things so if you didn't know birds have feathers all over their body and it helps them to regulate their temperature and it also also helps to regulate the temperature Regulate body temperature, body temperature. So their feathers help them regulate their body temperature and their wing and tail feathers play a really special part in helping them fly. Birds were basically designed for flight and flying is also another way of them to get around and to exercise. I see a lot of people compare wing clipping to us cutting our nails and our hair and the biggest difference is that we don't use our hair or our nails to help us get around or to exercise. Our hair and our nails are constantly growing even after it's cut whereas for birds it could take anywhere from three months to an entire year for those flight feathers to grow back in depending on when they were cut. The time that it takes for those feathers to grow back in is also time where birds can't exercise properly and when they can't exercise properly they're going to start losing muscle mass and become weaker. It's similar to when humans when we hurt our arms or our legs and we have to be in a cast for a month or however long it takes to heal so during that time we obviously can't move our arms or our legs because it needs to heal properly. I'm sure if you've ever broken your arm or your leg you know that after you take off that cast your arm or your leg is going to seem a lot skinnier than the other arm or leg that you've been using for a month or so after you get out of that cast you are going to have to rehabilitate your arm or your leg so that you can get back to the same strength you were at before so this is what's going to happen to birds as well they have been clipped for a longer period of time it is going to take them longer to get back to the same strength when you're trying to exercise to get back to the same strength you probably know that it's going to take a lot more effort so that's what's going to happen to birds as well they're going to put a lot of strain on their bodies to try and fly again if birds can't exercise properly not only are they going to become weaker and start losing muscle mass there is a possibility of that leading to obesity then that's going to lead to other diseases like fatty liver disease heart and kidney disease diabetes and also they're going to have trouble breathing among other things in terms of their mental health like I said before flying is how birds get around and it's how they exercise. Flying is also instinctual behavior for birds and it's how they respond and cope to the environment around them. If you take flight away from birds, they're still going to exhibit some flight behaviors or behaviors of them wanting to fly. So that's going to include head bobbing, wing quivering or wing flapping, and also pointing their body in the direction that they want to so go. When they've already tried to fly and they know that they can't fly, they are going to be stressed. They're going to be wondering why they can't fly. Like, I feel like flying, but my body is saying no. Why Why is this happening to me? Why can't I get anywhere? When birds realize that they can't fly, they have no other way of coping. And the only way to cope with that stress or that frustration is self-mutilation. So they could potentially start plucking their own feathers. As I said before, flying is also a bird's main defense mechanism. So if they can't fly away from something when they're scared, or if they feel threatened, then they could resort to other things like biting. So you could potentially end up with a bird that bites a lot as well. And also clipped birds tend to be a little less confident in themselves. So when I got pineapple, she did come clipped and uh, one time she tried to fly and she ended up landing on the floor. Luckily she didn't hurt herself, but when I went to go pick her up, I can tell by her demeanor and her body language that she was kind of scared. Like she didn't understand what was happening. She tried to fly and she couldn't get anywhere. So I could tell by the way she looked that she was kind of confused used and as to why her body wasn't allowing her to do something that she was born to do. I noticed that all the other times where she wanted to fly, she was a little hesitant and she kind of second guessed herself before she even took off. Depending on how long a bird has been clipped, it could take them years to start gaining that confidence again to trust their own bodies and how they were designed to move. And when they're learning to fly again, their flight patterns may look a little awkward or they might look a little off balance even when they're flying in the air. So it's going to look a little unnatural for them. Oh, she's so good. 
all of these things that I mentioned, all of the problems like lack of exercise and the effects that it's going to have on their mental health could be taking years off of their life expectancies. I personally prefer my birds flighted because not only is it good for their health, I don't want to be the one to take away their ability to fly. Birds were meant to fly and for me to take that away from them, I think it's kind of mean and selfish when I could easily change things around at home to make it more convenient for them to have a safe environment to for them to have a safe environment to fly in instead of making it more convenient for me. So if you're bringing a bird into your home, I think it's 100% your responsibility to make sure that you're providing an environment that is enriching and safe for them. If you're cooking, flight it or not, your birds should always be kept in their cage in a separate room away from the kitchen. And that is because even if you're cooking with bird safe pans, you could easily burn something and that could really harm your birds. And also if you have ceiling fans, it's probably best to not use them at all or make sure that your bird is not in the same room where the ceiling fan is or if you're bringing your bird into the room with the ceiling fan then you have to make sure that it is turned off and it has stopped moving completely before you bring your bird there because it is dangerous for them. If you have a busy house then you can either confine your bird in one room and you call that the bird room and you do everything with your bird in that room or you can make a set of rules for everyone to follow so that you are providing a safe environment for them. This is is especially important for new bird owners because you probably might not have enough experience to understand what it's like living with a flighted bird or with birds in general. Definitely understand where you would be coming from if you are a new parrot owner. About five years ago I was a first time parrot owner and pineapple was actually my first bird. I got her from Petco. While she was still clipped I took that time to my advantage. So I used that time to not only train her and form a bond in a relationship with her so that she could trust me, I also used that time to train myself to recognize the dangers that could potentially harm them around the house. I took her around to teach her what things were like, here is a window, you can't fly through this because it's solid. I tapped on the window and I also tapped on mirrors and walls and doors just so I could familiarize her with them. I also trained myself so second guess myself before I shut the door or before I open the window. Is there a window screen there? probably have a window screen in your windows and I don't know why you wouldn't because birds could either fly out and you could also be keeping bugs from flying in. Not only are you training your bird, you're also training yourself to get used to what it's like owning a bird. If you did get a clipped bird, use that time to your advantage. Teach your bird to get along with you and also teach yourself to recognize the dangers in your house that could hurt them. I don't think that bird safety is something that you can just pick up right away. Oh my god, I just pooped on my laptop. Tissue, I need tissue! Tissue! Ah! Bird safety is not something that you can just pick up right away. It's something that you have to learn and you have to gain those instincts to think about your bird first before you do anything. Also, flighted or not, do not take your birds outside with you without a harness or a carrier because no matter how much you think your bird trusts you or no matter how much you trust your bird, there is always a chance of them flying away because they're not used to that environment so anything could startle them and you could lose your bird forever. Of course, there are certain circumstances where flighted birds would need to be clipped because not everyone can get a new bird from the pet store or from a breeder where they come clipped and it's fine in D&D and you can just work from there. Some people are going to adopt flighted birds and they might not be as cooperative with you in terms of when you're trying to build that bond with them because they could be traumatized from certain events in their previous life. Maybe clipping their wings could be the way to go if that is how you're going to form that bond with them to begin with. So you ultimately want to make sure that you keep your birds flighted and you could definitely work towards that if your birds are clipped now because it's going to be better for their overall health. We brought them into our homes so it's it's our responsibility to provide everything for them to be happy and healthy and to live the best life. Let me know what you think. Do you agree or disagree with anything that I've said in this video? I'd love to know your thoughts. You could have a little chat about it in the comments down below. And also, let me know if you keep your birds flighted or clipped and why. Hi, I'm Pumpkin. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Hit the notification bell so you get notified every time we post new videos. And that's it for now. Peace. Bye.